As spring 1535 dawned across the land, a chorus of birdsong and the scent of fragrant blooms filled the crisp morning air with the promise of new life, something England's queen, Anne Boleyn, wished for more than anything. Since her marriage to Henry VIII and her coronation on the 1st of June 1533, Anne had given birth to a daughter, the future Elizabeth I, and suffered at least one miscarriage, or possibly a stillbirth, in late June 1534. Their healthy and precocious daughter offered the couple hope, however, the primary role of a queen consort was to bear sons, a duty Anne had not yet been able to fulfil. Their lack of a male heir was an obvious concern for the royal couple, but there were other pressures on their relationship. Opposition to their marriage continued both at home and abroad, and disquiet and confusion reigned in the hearts of their subjects, many of whom refused to accept Anne as their rightful queen. Despite the years that had passed since the annulment of Henry VIII's marriage to his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, she remained as popular with the people as ever, as did her 19-year-old daughter, the Lady Mary. Support for the ousted queen and former princess was not restricted to England. Catherine's familial links abroad gifted her with influential and vocal allies. Among them was the man who ruled over the most powerful empire in Europe, her nephew, Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor, who, in 1526, married Catherine's niece, Isabella. To further complicate matters for Henry and Anne, following the death of Francis I's first wife, Claude, whom Anne served for almost seven years, the French king married Charles V's sister, Eleanor. Thus, even the friendships Anne had forged during her time in France, with women such as Francis I's sister, the spirited Marguerite de Agoulême, were now strained by family loyalty. Loyalties that Catherine of Aragon called on at every opportunity. From her exile at Kimbolton Castle in Cambridgeshire, Catherine wrote to her nephew Charles V on the 8th of April, 1535, to thank him for the good he has done in getting the Pope to give a definitive sentence in the matter between the King and her. The sentence she was referring to was given by Clement VII on the 23rd of March, 1534, the very day that Parliament passed the first act of succession, at a secret consistory, he declared Catherine's marriage to the king valid.